So basically, you know, time is going while your game is running, right? But your game is like a modern game on a modern computer. How frequently is the game actually updating? Let's say you're running on a, um, you know, like 120 hertz monitor. So basically like 120 times a second, your, the game will draw the screen. Except not, right? Because what happens is your game's running along great and then you walk into that one spot in your game where you have too much stuff and this frame takes longer. And then it's back to 120 and then it slows down again. There's a couple of really long frames and then it's like back to 120 or whatever, right? So often a game looks like this, okay? So, so this is the visual frames that the player sees, right? And it's like, boom, 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 boom. We missed a refresh, we missed a refresh, then we saw it, we saw it, we saw it, we missed a refresh, whatever, right? So essentially the frame rate is kind of variable. If you did a great job optimizing your game, then maybe it, it, it's perfectly like that. But also stuff could happen that's not your fault. Like, you know, someone's also downloading some junk in the background, they're streaming to Twitch or whatever, and this delay, this delay could be caused by something other than your game, okay? So um, that's not a big deal. Uh, but physics engines in particular really don't like that a little bit of time happened and then a lot of time happened and then a little bit of time happened. The physics can become less stable if if they if like they you try to pretend like you're like hey physics update please an hour just passed okay just kidding only a second passed or whatever right and so physics engines would really like to update at a very constant rate some well-known constant rate they're just like boom we just move in these perfect update 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 and all these are the exact same size okay so what modern game engines like Godot will do is they have two separate concepts. They have process. I'm going to write this giant. They have process. And then they have physics. <laughs> physics underscore process. Okay. And so what that means is that for each node, uh, Godot, every time there's a new frame, Godot will talk to your node and it will call the process method. It'll call it here, it'll call it here, it'll call it here. And not only will it call it here, but it will tell you how much time has elapsed since the last one. So here, this might be like, you know, 1 over 60 or whatever. And then, and then they call it again with 1 over 60 because only a 60. But, but this one, there was a delay and so they call it with 1 over 20 or whatever, right? So that is... Um, if we look at uh, process. So this function gets called for every visual frame. And this value tells you how many seconds have elapsed since the last frame. That number will vary. You know, it might be stable most of the time, but sometimes it won't be because there was a hiccup or there was a shader cache or your computer decided to like, you know, uh, connect to a USB device or whatever. Um, then there's physics process and Godot says, I will try to call physics process at a reliable frequency, unrelated to the visuals. Uh, you can control how often that happens in the project settings under physics. You go to physics, common, physics ticks per second, this number. So the way I have mine set to 60, which means 60 times a second, Godot will call physics step and will update the physics engine. Which means sometimes, like if you look here, two frames, like this frame could happen and then a physics step happened, but then this frame happened and no physics step happened because it was too soon. So all that happened was a process. And then the next frame, enough time has passed so you get a process and a physics process. And then the same thing, we skip one and all we get is process. And then the next frame, enough time has passed, so you get a process and a physics process. And then the next frame, it like caught up again, so I got two, etc. And so what that means is that it means that process is guaranteed to happen every visual frame, but the time between them is not guaranteed. It could vary. 
physics process is guaranteed to be called at a fixed real time rate, but you might have a frame where this is not called and you might have a frame where this is called more than once to catch up. That would be this case right here where like we called it and then no new frame has happened, but we got a new physics update and then finally a new frame happens and like we get a physics update or whatever. Okay, so that is like a fundamental thing to understand. And if you're doing stuff that's talking to the physics system, it makes sense to do it inside physics process because that's the frequency with which the physics are being updated. But if you're doing stuff that's just visual and just needs to update every time a new frame is presented to the player, you want to do it in process. Hopefully that was a good explanation. Not to jump ahead, but matching the visuals to the physics has been a pain point. Yes. So, so, so this can cause a problem because my, my car is a rigid body. Rigid body only updates when there is a physics step. And so what can happen is like, um, let's do like a zoomed in view real quick. So a lot of games, you will see some kind of like stutter. Um, and that usually happens because of a discrepancy between the frame rate and the physics update. So let's let's do a simple example. Let's say that like we're running the game on a 100 hertz monitor. I bought some weird monitor and it updates at 100 times per second. And it's very reliable. I got a good computer. It's happening 100 times a second, right? So here's my here's my little frames. And then I have my physics set to update 60 times per second. That's not an even multiple. So the physics are going to be like, the boxes are a little bit bigger, right? They're going to be like this. This is, I don't know, this is probably not quite to scale, but like you get the idea. And then maybe they line up every so often or whatever, right? And so then what happens is my car, there will be two frames, like let's say the car is here, right? We're going to see a frame where the car is here. Next frame, the car hasn't moved because the physics engine hasn't updated yet. And so we'll see two frames where the car was here. And then on the next frame, the physics will have updated and so the car will jump to here. But then look, on the next frame, the physics updated again and so the car will jump to here. So we had two frames where the car was here and then car moved, car moved. We had, we had one here, so car moved. We have one here where they line up again, car moved. We have one here where they didn't line up again, cars here again. And so what this would look like is you have two frames of no, of the car not moving and then moving, 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 doesn't move, 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 doesn't move, 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 doesn't move. Now imagine that you've, de you've designed your camera as a separate object and the camera has a script that runs in process. And every frame, it tries to move towards the car. Right. So here. So let's say uh, we like on this frame. The camera was like, you know, was like here. And then what happens is the car camera hasn't moved, but the camera got a chance. So the camera will move a little closer. Right. But then the next frame, the car is here now. So now the camera is going to lurch and go here and then 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 here. And so what you get is the cameras like moves, moves like slow then moves fast, 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 slow, fast, 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 slow, because sometimes it gets two frames to catch the non-moving car what that will look like on screen is that the car is like going like this because it's normally good but then the camera catches up and then the camera loses it and then the camera catches up and then loses it and you get this like jitter and the faster you go the the more the car's moving per frame the more that's going to show up and so essentially if you code things in a very simple way where you don't actually know about this you're going to get weird stutter and one way to fix it would be to move your camera to do be in physics process. But then what happens is what if someone is playing your game on a really fast computer, like this fast? This person is running your game at like 300 frames per second, but they're not going to see smooth 300 frames per second motion. They're going to see 60 sec frames per second motion because the actual physics are only updating at 60 frames a second. Um, so this is an annoying problem. Um, and yeah, there's a thing called physics interpolation, which tries to fix this. And the way it fixes it 
is what it does is it waits until so like uh, let, let, let's say we we are currently on this frame right here what the system will do is it will say well look i remember that as the most recent physics update the car was you know uh the car was here and a f and one physics update in the past the car was here and now uh, for this current frame we are about 60 percent of the way through the next physics update so i'm gonna go into the past and i will place the car right here and then like the next frame comes around right right here and it says well for this frame i'm at like 30 percent of the way and so i'm gonna take and we now have this this one so now we're going from this one to this one and we're only going to go 30 percent and we'll put the car here and so what the player sees is the car goes from here to here to these like weird interpolated positions but you get a new position every frame at the expense of a delay where you're always looking a little bit into the past because you only have uh, good data from the past to, that you could slide smoothly between. So you always have to be one fix update behind. So if you do, if you turn on that your fit and you have like a really twitchy game or something, then your physics won't feel quite as responsive because you're always like one, one fixed up in the past. Um, I am doing that. That's what I'm doing. Um, and I think this is, this was in Godot 3, like you could check a checkbox and like turn on the interpolation. Um, and I'm in Godot 4.2 and that checkbox went away in Godot 4 and I think is getting resurrected in 4.3. But um, I have, uh, I just implemented it myself. 